aircrafts has always been a fundamental factor in the world of warfare. And as we evolve, there has been mind-blowing improvements in the designs and purpose of fighter jets, from colossal to tiny, undetectable drones, and now spy planes. It is not shocking that the belief in UFOs is linked to the existence of spy planes due to their futuristic design, invisibility, and swiftness. These advanced characteristics make it appear alien-like while it serves the crucial purpose of its creation. What do spy planes look like? Why is it deemed important in the world of modern warfare? Join us as we look into the characteristics of some American spy planes that drove the USSR crazy. Northrop Grumman, B-2 Spirit. The Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit, also known as the Stealth Bomber, is an American heavy strategic bomber that features a low observable stealth technology that is designated to penetrate the defenses of a dense anti-aircraft. It is the only long-range strike bomber in the United States. It made its maiden flight on July 11, 1979, and since then, the B-2 Spirit has been a formidable weapon in the world of aviation and engineering. This aircraft represents a significant achievement in technology, showcasing American air power prowess. Still in active service, the B-2 continues to captivate and forge ahead. With dimensions of 69 feet in length, 17 feet in height, and a wingspan of 172 feet. The B-2 can carry a massive 20-ton payload. It boasts a remarkable range, covering 6,000 nautical miles without refueling and up to 10,000 nautical miles with just one refueling. The B-2's global reach enables it to reach any destination within hours. Its stealth is achieved by minimizing infrared, acoustic, electromagnetic, visual, and radar signals. This makes it challenging for any advanced defense systems to spot, track, or target the B-2 bomber. U-2. The U-2 emerged as a crucial response to the United States' urgent need for intelligence during the Cold War. When they were faced with the challenge of gathering precise information on Soviet activities, Lockheed Martin proposed a groundbreaking solution. His solution was an aircraft equipped with advanced photography gear to capture images from high altitudes beyond the reach of Soviet radars. The U-2 is also known as the Dragon Lady, a single-engine spy plane developed by Lockheed Martin's Secretive Skunk Works division. Valued at $70 million, the U-2, operated by the United States Air Force and previously by the CIA and the Chinese Air Force, was officially approved in 1954 after its proposal in 1953. Its inaugural flight occurred on August 1, 1955, followed by active service introduction in 1956, revolutionizing intelligence gathering. Capable of flying at an altitude of 70,000 feet in any weather and operating day and night, the U-2 virtually avoided being detected during its Cold War missions over China, Cuba, the Soviet Union, and Vietnam. Beyond that era, it played roles in conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq, contributing to multinational NATO operations. The U-2 showcased versatility, engaging in advanced tasks from electronic sensor research to satellite calibration. It served the United States Air Force for over 50 years. Despite the passage of time, the U-2 remains active, having undergone necessary upgrades to align with advanced demands. Boeing YF-118G The Boeing YF-118G, also referred to as Bird of Prey, stands out as a unique jet, never intended for production but designed as an experimental stealth test bed. This project, privately funded by Boeing with a huge amount of $67 million of investment, aimed to explore different aircraft technologies and enhance methods of making planes less visible to both the eye and radar. Named after a Star Trek spacecraft due to design similarities, the Bird of Prey took shape in 1992 at the secretive Area 51. It is powered by a Pratt and Whitney JT 15D5C turbofan engine and operated at a maximum altitude of 20,000 feet. 
Boeing's innovative approach included using single-piece carbon composite structures, plywood frames, and glass fiber molds, offering insights into cost effectiveness and performance improvement. The project underscored the significance of 3D virtual reality in aircraft design and assembly, which is now a standard practice. The Bird of Prey featured unconventional elements, including parallel fuselage and wings for radar wave reflection, a top-mounted engine air inlet behind the cockpit, and active camouflage tests attempting to match surroundings for heightened stealth. In 1996, the Bird of Prey took its first flight and completed 38 flights before retiring in 1999. Its unconventional features remained shrouded in secrecy for years, until industry standards caught up with its technologies. While much about the jet's unconventional features remains undisclosed, it left a lasting impact. The sole aircraft was eventually donated by Boeing to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force, where it resides today, symbolizes a unique chapter in experimental aviation. F-117 Nighthawk the F-117 Nighthawk holds the distinction of being the first operational United States aircraft designed with a primary focus on stealth. This jet emerged in response to the Department of Defense's request for an aircraft that could avoid detection by emitting minimal radio, infrared, or light energy, making it challenging for radar and other sensors to locate. The entire process of constructing the F-117 was kept in secret due to its role as an attacking aircraft, reliant on surprise rather than speed or agility. Despite lacking supersonic speeds or afterburners, the F-117 excelled in stealth. Lockheed's strategy for maintaining the Nighthawk's stealth involved a distinctive triangular shape, swept back wings, and a surface composed of flat planes collectively redirecting radar waves away from the aircraft. Any remaining radar waves were absorbed by the jet's radar-absorbing coating. The F-117 navigated indirectly using inertia guidance, digital maps, and radio commands, allowing it to move without emitting signals. Presently, the F-117 is semi-retired and is no longer conducting official missions, but serving as a training aircraft. With a significant flyaway cost of $107 million, only 64 were produced, including five prototypes and 59 production versions. Its successor, the F-22 Raptor, marked the world's first fifth-generation fighter. The F-117 unique design and groundbreaking stealth capabilities have left a lasting legacy in the evolution of military aviation. A-12s. The A-12 was created when the U-2 became more visible to the Soviets with their upgraded radar systems. It was a big improvement over the U-2, flying at Mach 3 speeds and proving that a hypersonic aircraft could work. The A-12 was born from the Archangel program, which also gave rise to the SR-71 and, indirectly, the future SR-72 Lockheed Martin's hypersonic jet. The CIA was excited about the A-12 because it provided solutions to their questions. Thanks to years of research, advanced aerodynamics, and a strong partnership between Cambridge's Scientific Engineering Institute and Lockheed Corporation, the A-12 had a reduced radar cross-section. Clarence Kelly Johnson, who designed the U-2, also designed the A-12 under the Oxcart program to keep a technological edge over the Soviet Union. It could fly higher than the U-2 and had a similar range. The AT-12 was groundbreaking in many ways, seemingly fulfilling the CIA's quest for a long-lasting reconnaissance aircraft. However, it operated for only one year, from 1967 to 1968. The high cost of $2.1 billion and the Kennedy administration's decision to stop all reconnaissance missions over Soviet territory were key factors in its short-lived operation. E-3 Sentry Sentry is an aircraft designed for airborne warning and control, known as AWACS. It is equipped with surveillance, target recognition, and tracking capabilities, all managed under an integrated command and control battle system. 
the Joint Air Operations Center receives real-time information about the battle space and ongoing joint allied and coalition operations from the E-3 Sentry. This aircraft provides situational awareness, command and control over a designated area, battle management for theater forces, all-weather surveillance, and early warning of enemy actions. The E-3 Sentry was created by adding a spinning radar dome to a modified Boeing 707 to 320 commercial aircraft. Suspended at about 11 feet above the fuselage, the dome has a diameter of 30 feet and a thickness of 6 feet, housing a radar subsystem for surveillance from the Earth's surface into the stratosphere. The E-3 Sentry has an unpressurized rotodome with about 30 feet in diameter and 6 feet thick at the center. It is positioned 11 feet above the fuselage by two struts. Tilted down for reduced aerodynamic drag during takeoffs, electronic corrections are made by radar and secondary surveillance radar antenna phase shifters. The rotodome has cooling doors and fluorocarbon-based cold plate cooling to regulate equipment temperatures. The hydraulically rotated antenna system enables the AN-APY-1 and AN-APY-2 radar to conduct surveillance from the Earth's surface to the stratosphere over land or water. The E3 Century's major subsystems include navigation, communications, and computers. 14 consoles display computer processed data on screens, aiding operators in surveillance, identification, weapons control, battle management, and communications. Data can be transmitted in real time to command centers or ships. During crises, Information may be forwarded to the National Command Authority in the U.S. via RC-135 or Aircraft Carrier Task Forces. Electrical generators in each of the E-3's four engines provide one megawatt of power for the aircraft's radars and electronics. The Pulse Doppler radar has a range of over 250 miles for low-flying targets at its operating altitude, while the Pulse radar covers about 400 miles for medium to high altitude aircraft. The radar, combined with secondary surveillance radar and electronic support measures, allows for a lookdown capability, detecting, identifying, and tracking low flying aircraft while eliminating ground clutter returns. MQ 1B The MQ 1B Predator was developed in response to a request from the Department of Defense to provide continuous intelligence surveillance, reconnaissance, and strike capabilities for warfighters. Designated as the RQ-1 Predator, the U.S. Air Force was selected by the Secretary of Defense in April 1996 to operate this system. In 20 on 2, the inclusion of AGM-114 Hellfire missiles led to a change in designation from RQ-1 to MQ-1, allowing the Predator to respond effectively against targets for intelligence surveillance reconnaissance, close air support, and interdiction. In August 2011, the United States Air Force and the Predator system achieved a feat when it surpassed over one million hours in total, encompassing development, testing, training, and combat. This achievement highlighted the extensive and valuable contribution of the MQ-1B Predator to military operations. The MQ-1B Predator exhibits versatility by utilizing a hard surface runway, measuring 5,000 by 75 feet. This capability ensures operational flexibility while being invisible to the antenna of the ground data terminal. The system's adaptability, coupled with its extensive service record, solidifies its role as a crucial asset for intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and strike operations, underscoring its importance in modern military strategies. The Predator serves as the main remotely piloted aircraft for offensive missions in Afghanistan, Pakistani tribal areas, and beyond from 2001 until the MQ-9 Reaper was introduced. While U.S. military officials acknowledged the intelligence and reconnaissance strengths, details of offensive uses remain classified. Eventually, the United States Air Force phased out the Predator in 2018, replacing it with the Reaper. MiG-21 the Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-21, also known as Fishbed, is a supersonic jet fighter and interceptor crafted by the Mikoyan Gurevich Design Bureau in the Soviet Union, 
It stands out as one of the most successful spy planes in history, having served in at least 60 countries across four continents. Today, it remains active in the air forces of 18 different countries. This supersonic plane boasts Mach 2 capabilities and a range of 410 miles, making it perfectly suited for effective reconnaissance. With a reasonable price tag of $25.1 million, the MiG-21 has proven to be a cost-effective choice. Originally developed for the Soviet, Indian, Croatian, and Romanian Air Forces, it made its debut in 1959 and quickly became a sensation. Its lightweight, single-engine design, coupled with exceptional maneuverability, impressed the world. The MiG-21's success was so remarkable that China sought a license to produce its own version, known as the Chengdu J-7. What sets the MiG-21 apart is its status as the most widely produced jet fighter ever. Its top performance, suitability for unimproved airfields, remarkable maneuverability, supersonic speeds, extensive range and affordability have contributed to its enduring popularity. The MiG-21 remains a symbol of success in the evolution of aviation, serving as a reliable choice for various countries around the globe. SR-7 Blackbird. The SR-71 Blackbird is the fastest operational aircraft globally. Lockheed Martin introduced this groundbreaking marvel in 1964, showcasing an incredible feat achieved with limited computing power, especially when compared to today's technological standards. The intriguing twist in its creation involves the Soviet Union indirectly providing the titanium for the Blackbird's airframe. It is a secretive project whose design is influenced by the A-12 and is aimed for reduced radar visibility. Initially proposed as a bomber, it evolved into a reconnaissance focus. Longer and heavier than the A-12, the SR-71 featured a two-seat cockpit and greater fuel capacity. It joined the United States Air Force in 1966. It was retired in 1989 mainly due to political reasons, with brief reactivation in the 1990s before a final retirement in 1998. NASA used the SR-71 for research until its last retirement in 1999. The SR-71 set an unmatched continuous flight speed record of Mach 3.3 in 1976. Despite speculations that it reached Mach 3.5 during operational missions over Libya, its primary defense mechanism was its sheer speed, lacking inherent defensive capabilities. To evade potential interceptions, SR-71 pilots would accelerate, outrunning any incoming missiles. Notably, pilot Robert Helt achieved an absolute height record of 85,000 feet, marking a pinnacle unmatched by any air-breathing aircraft since. The SR-71's legacy is defined by its unparalleled speed and achievements, creating a lasting impression in aviation history. Even with the emergence of advanced technologies, the Blackbird's engineering prowess and unmatched records remain a testament to its iconic status as the world's fastest operational aircraft. RQ-4 Global Hawk Meet the RQ-4 Global Hawk, a remarkable high-altitude, long-endurance, remotely piloted aircraft designed for worldwide intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions in any weather, day or night. The story of the Global Hawk began in 1995, when it was introduced as an advanced concept technology demonstration. Recognizing its military potential, this evolving technology provided warfighters with a sophisticated high-altitude, long-endurance ISR capability. Since November 2001, the Global Hawk has been actively deployed, supporting overseas contingency operations and proving its effectiveness in real-world scenarios. The letters R and Q in its name stands for Reconnaissance and Unmanned Aircraft Systems, respectively following the Department of Defense's definitions. Equipped with an integrated sensor suite, the Global Hawk is designed to navigate the skies, collecting valuable intelligence across various environments. Its versatility allows it to operate seamlessly in challenging conditions, 
ensuring continuous surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities. This unmanned aircraft serves as a crucial asset, contributing to the success of military operations with its advanced technology and strategic deployment. Global Hawk operations involve two key elements, the launch and recovery element, LRE, and the mission control element, LRE. The LRE, located at the aircraft base, manages the launch and recovery process during transit to and from the target area. Meanwhile, the MCE takes charge of the Global Hawk for the majority of its intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance mission. The pilot workstations in both the MCE and LRE serve as the control and display interface, presenting information on aircraft health and sensor status and offering a means to adjust the navigational track. The pilot from these stations communicates with external entities, such as air traffic control, airborne controllers, ground controllers, and other intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance assets to coordinate the mission. The sensor operator workstation is equipped to task the sensor update the collection plan in real time, initiate sensor calibration, and monitor sensor status. Additionally, the sensor operator aids the exploitation node in tasks like image quality control, target deck prioritization, and scene tracking, ensuring smooth and effective operations. Artemis Aircraft The Artemis I aircraft, a space launch system, or SLS, is a rocket well recognized for a unique achievement. It generates about 15% more thrust than the Saturn V rocket, which propelled Apollo astronauts to the moon in the 1960s. While the Soviet Union attempted to develop a more powerful rocket, none of its test launches proved successful. Following the successful launch in November 2022, the SLS flight software team is enhancing operational features and introducing new test scenarios for Artemis II. Experiences from its previous missions shaped the software's development, ensuring its readiness for numerous test cases on launch day. The next phase involved the formal qualification testing for SLS flight software in the SLS development facility. In the fall, the engineers conducted integrated system testing in the SLS system integration lab using the complete suite of SLS avionics hardware and flight software. The results from the flight software development facility will provide crucial evidence of Artemis II mission readiness. Before Artemis II begins its mission, flight software engineers will have virtually simulated the SLS mission over 100,000 times in the extensive SLS avionics and software development and test facilities. This comprehensive preparation ensures the software's capability to respond effectively during the Artemis II journey. The SLS surpassed Elon Musk's Starship and SpaceX Falcon Heavy, claiming the title of the most potent flying rocket. However, the potential for Musk's Starship to fulfill its promise might lead to a future competition for this distinction. The primary objective of Artemis I is to create space for astronauts to revisit the moon. Each lesson NASA learns from the Artemis missions serves as a stepping stone shaping plans for the initial expeditions to Mars set for the 2030s. This intriguing detail about the SLS shows its unique role in space exploration, surpassing historical achievements and contributing to the ambitious goals of revisiting the moon and planning future missions to Mars. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to watch another of our interesting videos. See you there.